Hello, and welcome to my review of the Ducky Shine 7 RGB keyboard. So, I apologize for the crappy camera setup. I'm just gonna like try to hold it like this. Um, I don't ever do reviews on anything, but uh, there's not a lot of info out on this keyboard, and there's a lot of things I've learned with my time with this keyboard that I really would have liked to know when I bought it. So uh, if you're thinking about buying this keyboard then stay tuned because I'm gonna go through like the software for the RGB and pretty much go through all of what you can customize with it and you might want to know about that. Um, this is kinda gonna be a bit of a negative review and if you already own this keyboard and you're happy with it, then this review probably isn't for you because um, it seems like there's not a lot of like negative reviews on these. Like negative reviews aren't well received, and everybody like only says good things about this brand. And this is my first keyboard from them, so this is just my first impressions. And I'm kind of unbiased in that way, but uh, there's a lot of hype on this keyboard, and it is kind of a, it's it's definitely like an expensive keyboard. It's up there in the price range. I'm gonna be comparing it to this keyboard in the background. This is a Corsair K70 RGB. Uh, it's the old one. Uh, back then, it was kind of comparable in price. This was like 180, and I got this Ducky for like a little over 200. Um, the Corsair I got like four and a half years ago, so it's kind of an old one now, and the price has come down since then. The new ones go for like 130 I believe. And I think for most people, I'm going to end up recommending the Corsair, so just so you know. But uh, we'll get into why right now. So the first thing, uh, I, I guess we'll start with good things. The RGB actually looks really nice. The lighting, like the color transitions, are really smooth. That's something this Corsair keyboard doesn't have. Uh, the lighting transitions on that one kind of make the keys look flickery, and it doesn't look quite as good. Like, this is a more polished keyboard, I think. Uh, the spacebar is also really cool. I, <laughs> I do like what they did with that. I know a lot of people take the spacebar off because they, like, come with a replacement blank spacebar, but I actually think that's probably like one of my favorite things about this keyboard. Um, it's pretty hefty, like, I don't know, some people think like, oh, if it's like heavy, that means it's like really good quality. I mean, like, you can like try to torque it a little bit. It's, 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 it's sturdy. Um, and I guess that like stiffness in the chassis of the keyboard uh, is gonna give you like a more consistent typing feel, to be honest. Um, I don't, I don't notice it. Like I've never had a keyboard like even these like plastic. This one actually has an aluminum backplate, but like I think, but it's even like the plasticky keyboards that I've used. Um, I don't think like a nicer chassis is if you're new, if you're getting into mechanical keyboards. I don't think it's worth like the extra cost to have that. But uh, that that it's it's a. Uh, it's a plus for some people, like if you want to have a like a nice kind of thing. Um, and the keycaps feel nice. Uh, these aren't these these are aftermarket keycaps on this K70, and they're they're not like the nicest feeling keycaps. These keycaps are like they have a nice feel to them, and the typing feel of this keyboard is pretty nice. Um, though it is it's just Cherry MX Reds, and so is this other keyboard. So, really, if you're, <laughs> there's not a huge difference between them. I, I was using this one for a while, and I went back to my Corsair, and, like, it didn't feel as good, but it's kind of like placebo, because after, like, 20 minutes, like, you stop noticing that stuff. Um, I don't know if they do anything special to so the Cherry MX Red switches in this keyboard, but maybe they, like, 
do some extra like lubrication or something to make them a little bit smoother. But uh, in general, it's the typing feel is going to be really similar to any other Cherry MX Red keyboard. Um, so let's start with like the big negatives. Uh, you might have noticed I don't have like NumLock on, and this is, I'm about to show you why. For some reason, they made the NumLock and like the caps lock and the scroll lock and everything. Um, they're super bright. Like it's not you can't appreciate. Like you can see, it's just a white blur on the video, and you can't really appreciate how bright that is in real life. But it's bright enough that you, if you look down at it you're going to be seeing like spots and even I'm not like I'm not like sitting in a dark room or anything but like if I look at that like it I have spots in my eyes um it's just way too bright I don't know why they use those LEDs it doesn't make any sense uh you, you're look if you're looking down usually it's not that big of a problem like I don't mind it too much because you'll you're looking at the keyboard like this most of the time so you're not going to see it um and uh, like your indicator that it's on is going to be like there's like a little bit of like a uh, light that goes onto the keycap in front of it that's how you see that it's on <laughs> but as soon as you like get up and you like look down at your nice keyboard it just blinds you like that and it's really a really weird choice that they decided to do that i don't understand <laughs> why it's like that um I've never seen any keyboard that has it like that. Um, another thing is, I was just talking about how nice the keycaps feel. Um, I'm actually going to set this to a white backlight so you can see this more easily. So these keycaps, um, like for example, like this home key, you see like the top of the E is like blacked out. Like that's how it looks like in real life. That's not the camera at all. That's there's just parts of these keycaps where there's text. The light doesn't go through them or like this pause, like the bottom of the E doesn't look right. Um, like a little bit on the cal. Um, this page up, like the P is messed up, and like between the P and the G, uh, the page down is really messed up between the P and the G and the D and the G, or the D and the N. I can't even read it because of <laughs> it's just the end is uh the D is kind of messed up, the delete key. I don't know if I already talked about that one. Um, yeah, that's just how it looks like, and. <laughs> On some of them, like this pause key, it's kind of obvious. And when I first turned on the keyboard, the very first thing I saw was that the keycaps are messed up like this. And I looked around online, and there's not a lot of people talking about this key keyboard, but it seems like everybody has this issue. Like if you if you buy one of these, you can pretty much be guaranteed that it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna have this problem. And I don't know if it, if that's like that's like something they would probably cover under warranty, but this keyboard came like all the way from China and it took super long to ship and the support like contacting their support for like replacements is kind of slow and it doesn't seem like it's worth it. I don't know if they would replace these. I don't know if they I don't know if they made keycaps that actually look right. <laughs> to even be able to replace these. I just have no idea. But um, on a keyboard that's like over $200 and the whole reason you're getting it, because keep in mind, you can buy a keyboard with the same switches for like a third of the price. The whole reason you're paying that extra money is for quality and the keycaps are like not quality controlled. Um, which is really disappointing. The other thing is the spacebar. Uh, it's better now. It's kind of worn in actually. If you can like see, uh, there is like no space between the spacebar and the chassis. And you just listen.
like do you see that it doesn't go down smoothly it's brushing against the side of the keyboard and when I first got it when I was hitting spacebar with the side of my thumb like that uh, it would actually stick down and like stay stay down like that um, I haven't been using it that long and it's already like worn in like it doesn't do that anymore it's still kinda like rough but it's not it's not a huge deal but like why did they how did that happen and that's another issue not everybody has this one I heard it's like kind of common but it's not it's not everybody's space bars also I think it's only this one with the cool graphic on it which I really like uh, if you put in the plain space bar and because you're boring and you like that kind of thing and then that one doesn't actually rub I don't think but I don't I don't understand how that kind of got through so aside from that like the typing feels fine honestly if you're if you're like a if you're like a connoisseur of typing which I'm not really I was just using this for gaming and uh, I was doing some rhythm gaming on it so that's kind of like it's kind of hard use and uh, it matters to me how the feeling of the keys is and it was it was good um, but if you're a typing connoisseur probably this keyboard this uh, spacebar thing is gonna bother you unless you switch that out for the for the other one or I guess you could like take this out and like shave it down or like file it down just a little bit so that it has more clearance but uh, it's just bizarre how that like it gets stuck coming back up it's, it's really weird um, so that's like a review of the physical keyboard and now I wanna like talk about the software because um, for me that is the most important part or the most like disappointing part of this keyboard everything else I can I can I can live with that stuff it's not a huge problem really it's just kind of small things and I wouldn't return it just because of that um, but this keyboard software has some real issues and that's crazy to me because it's competing with this keyboard in the RGB world uh, I'm gonna tell you right now if you're thinking about getting a ducky and you like ducky and you only care about the typing experience and everything I say about the RGB being bad like you're gonna say oh I don't care there's no customization then I would just get it without the RGB the uh, the RGB is bare is, is, is not really like a selling point of this keyboard at this point because well I'll show you, I'll show you why so let's just get right into that so this is the ducky RGB software uh, you get six profiles uh, no more no less <laughs> which is fine and they're all they're all stored on the keyboard which is better than the Corsair I'm just gonna move this so you can see what I'm seeing here um, so they're all stored on the keyboard which is cool um, I don't know if the new Corsair has more that's stored to the actual keyboard memory but uh, this one stores all six uh, like you get basically this is all you all you get you get wave mode you can choose the direction and the speed um, like you can't choose how thick the waves are if you want colors you can like mess around with the colors kind of uh, I don't think you can like select anything on here I don't really know but uh, yeah no, that's that's probably my favorite mode for it I think that looks the nicest and it does look really nice the uh, the RGB lighting, uh, it's not really in frame, but uh, it's very smooth how the lighting works and it's good looking, but like, okay, we have like a wave, uh, Tetris is just like a, fills up from the bottom, color cycling, you can have speed and lightness, which I guess is brightness, uh, raindrops, uh, you can change the background color on this one, uh, circle ripple, which is whenever you hit a key it's gonna do a ripple uh, reactive whenever you hit a key it's gonna 
light up to that color. Um, Aurora is going to light up the row that you hit. Uh, breathing. Um, you can change the speed. I don't think like you can't like change like if I wanted half of this to be breathing and half of this to be like just regular backlight like I couldn't do that and that's something you can change very easily and I'm going to show you on like the Corsair software there is just one one full backlighting mode and backlighting off and for some reason <laughs> this is like more of a quirk it's a really interesting quirk but it's not like a downside but there's like four hidden modes when you click this plus icon that are here and you can add them in and I don't know and you can like take modes out of here like trash can them if you just don't want to see them and it doesn't make it doesn't make like any sense because this isn't like your profiles you can't scroll through these on the keyboard like they're not saved to the key these are your profiles and you're gonna have six profiles so why would you and it's independent for each profile like I added those to profile five and now like in six I would have to add them again and it's really bizarre and it can't it comes like that as well like these four are the ones that it doesn't show you at first like they're well, they're kind of like hidden in a certain way uh, when I say it like oh it's super obvious this plus sign is here but when I when I first like opened this up, like I didn't notice that plus sign until like I stared at it for like <laughs> a good amount of time. Um, so the by clicking plus sign, you get equalizer mode, which is actually really cool and <laughs> actually works really well. It's just um, like if you play music, uh, I don't have anything to play, but it's gonna like show like bars on the keyboard. So. That's cool. Um, Razor Chroma mode, we'll come back to. Multi mode, this, so this is where I was like, okay, I was looking at this multi mode and I was thinking like, oh, okay, this is where I can like really customize it. I can do more than one mode and I can have like multiple things going on because that's what I had with my K70. And I was like, okay, that's good. So I'm gonna do like breathing and wave. Uh, so the first problem <laughs> is like, I can't add another wave. So if I want a wave going this way and a wave going the other way, then it's not going to happen. It's you can only add one wave. <laughs> so you like each mode once you add it, it's that's it. You get one and you can't like yeah. <laughs> um we should do green breathing and rainbow wave and you save it and it's on profile 5 and it doesn't do it and I have no idea why it doesn't do it and I, from what I can tell uh, multi-mode like I've played around with it a good bit and no matter what I do multi-mode like doesn't do anything like the lights never actually show up on the keyboard it's it basically just doesn't exist and it's really weird to me because this keyboard like I was I was reading about some issues with this keyboard and they were being asked on a forum in like January which is like eight months ago and this keyboard is on I updated the keyboard firmware and I updated the software version and this is the latest stuff and like there's a mode in in here like forget about like not being able to customize some of this stuff like this mode just actually doesn't work and they never fixed it <laughs> um, by clicking like the secret menu you also get like snake mode so that's cool you can get like a snake uh, you can't change how long it is but you can change how fast it is and you can go either right or left <laughs> um, so then there's like these two modes um, and here you can actually this is like where you get to interact with with like this thing like you can actually choose colors and that's kind of what I was expecting to be able to do with like all of these modes and that's pretty disappointing but I saw that it has Razor Chroma Connect so I was like okay Ducky couldn't put together a software that's as good as the uh, Corsair Utility Engine 
but they were smart enough to realize that and somebody that was working on this keyboard when they were designing it was like oh we can give it Razer Chroma Connect and that's gonna that's a good software from like an industry leader and that's gonna work so let's go into Razer Chroma Connect now uh, so we have this working and this is Chroma Studio and in Connect I can go to devices and yeah, the Ducky RGB software is here and all you see is this circle with these four dots so it just kind of like looks like it's a loading loading screen and nothing ever actually happens here you can't get the keyboard to work with this and I did some digging and it's pretty easy to find like this forum post um, this is from Razer the Fiend, an official staff member and he says Basically, it's not going to work unless you have a Razer product because Chroma Studio needs to be connected to a Razer product for it to even like start it up. And okay, that's kind of a that's kind of a big big deal because now like you have people that have these these Ducky products and like. You didn't know this. I didn't know this going in. I thought, like, oh, I'm going to be able to use this. And I found, like, a ducky rep saying the same exact thing, but um, I tried looking for that forum post, but I couldn't find it. But I, you can pretty much trust this to be true. So, okay, so what did I do next? Um, I'm a good, I, I don't do reviews of anything, but um striving to be a good reviewer, so I bought this, a uh, Razer Death Adder Chroma Elite Edition, and when I plug this in, you'll be able to see that uh, we can get rid of this loading screen and we can actually uh, get some effects working in Razer Synapse, so I can be able to review the keyboard a little bit better. So I plug in the mouse, and um, so I don't let me let me get this working first. It's not like super intuitive, so I think it'll only work after I take the keyboard out, and I need to plug the keyboard back in, and I think I need to start up the Ducky software again. Um, this this actually works, like, it's just because I'm hot-swapping the mouse. Okay, I think it's working now. So, I, when I first saw this, before I connected the mouse, before I bought the mouse, I saw this circle thing, and I thought, oh, that's where the keyboard's going to be. Like, this is a loading, like, these four dots are like, oh, it's like a dot dot dot, like, we're waiting for it to load. No, this is <laughs> this is all you get. You don't get like like in Ducky, like see this like keyboard or like the Corsair, like you can select like keys. Uh no, in the Razer Chroma Connect, uh Ducky like forgot to tell them that this is a keyboard, so that's that's it. You get a circle. And <laughs> this severely limits what you can do with the keyboard. Because first of all, uh, like there's four these four dots uh, you can't select them you can only select the whole keyboard but like I'm gonna do like fire mode because this is like the easiest to tell what it's doing um, these four circles All right, let me let me try to get this in frame these four circles like, see where there's like a hard cutoff where the flame effects are happening? Yeah, you can see that. Like, there's three like separate blocks. Those four circles on the screen are corresponding to four like blocks of keys on the keyboard. And basically, that means that most of these effects are gonna look like garbage because they're not smooth from one key to the next. They just go on this block of keys and then there's this abrupt change and like if I do like a ripple effect 
then that's where it's like super obvious and by the way because it's not like <laughs> it's not like a keyboard in the software like the software doesn't know it's a keyboard like the ripple effects literally don't work um, I believe if I click the mouse yeah if I click the mouse it'll work because it knows the mouse is a mouse but this isn't like coded as a keyboard so it literally only ripples when I click my mouse key and the ripple like you can see that, right? Like on the on the keyboard itself, because there's only four lighting zones. The like wave effects and the ripple effects, they don't look right. They don't look because it's four it's four blocks. Like it's not smooth. It's not a smooth ripple. So, like I realized this, <laughs> and like I was flabbergasted because this is less. Like, they, somebody at Ducky, like, went over the RGB software that they put out, this this one, and they said, like, this isn't good enough for the market, so let's give it Razor Chroma so that, like, you can do more custom lighting effects. And then they, like, I don't know if they forgot to, like, make this a keyboard or, like, they can't make it a keyboard or I don't know what the problem is, but they, like, decided to put, like, this as a feature and like this doesn't this doesn't work there's nothing there's nothing you can do with with razor chroma connect here like anything that you would be able to do you could just do it's just better to do it in ducky rgb because it looks better it doesn't have the four discrete zones <laughs> and that's really disappointing because this keyboard has been out for long enough that I don't know if they'll change that and make that like an actual keyboard. And if you were able to like just have a keyboard here instead of the circle, I would be so much happier with this keyboard. Um, like in the Corsair, like for Corsair's keyboard, I'm gonna like change it so you can see the other keyboard. Like I have this lighting effect and like I have ripples at the same time as like, you can see it on the screen as well as the keyboard itself. Like I have a wave going to the left, I have a wave going to the right. I can say how wide I want the waves to be. I can put a gradient on the waves. I have like waves going up and down and I have a ripple and like, I can just make like a new profile that I just made and you can every every key you can just easily whatever you want to map it to uh, you can do macros I don't like use this stuff but it's super easy to do it here and in the ducky software um, I might be like missing it because there's a way to do there's a way to do macros with ducky but like not not here you know um you can import and export your profiles that's a feature that this has but there's six of them and all of them are so basic like compared to how customized the profile is on this all of these effects that you can have are so basic that there's not even a need for being able to import or export them like you never you never need to do that uh you can also rename them and that's not even like, because they correspond, like, the way you scroll through them on your keyboard memory is you press FN and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You wouldn't even want to rename these something else. So, I don't know. With, like, the Corsair one, like, I can, like, create a new group here and call it, like, one thing. And create another group here and call it, like, another thing. And, like... I can like do uh, I can do a different effect like I can assign a new lighting effect to this and I can make this one be when I click a key I can make it have a wave and I can like customize oh I want the wave to be exactly exactly like this and I can put these markers in here and I can say how long I want the wave to be I want it to be like a really long wave and a fast wave and 
I can tell it how long I want it to last, and I can tell it in degrees where it's supposed to come from. And it's like, oh, I have to name it. Um, that's like the worst part of the software is that you get a lot of clutter from naming all these effects. But like, so I have like this, if I click, if I click a key, like, I have this effect that I added earlier that's for every key. Like, I can have it ripple when I click here. When I click here, I can have it ripple and also do like this wave just over here. And I can add like a third whole different thing over there. And like, the amount of like things you can do with this, like, like this profile is just like Christmas stripes. Like, you wouldn't be able to to do this on on the ducky, and like people have made so many cool profiles for this, and like this ocean one, even it's like super basic. You click a key, and it's like there's like three three ripples. You can't like do that on the ducky, and it's so disappointing because this keyboard, this K70 that I'm showing this to you on, came out almost five years ago and the lighting effects are way better and you can get this keyboard now for like almost half the price of this ducky and I I guess I just really don't get why why you would want want something like this if you so if you care about the RGB at all I hope I showed you like the features sufficiently for you to make a purchasing decision because this wasn't like anywhere on the internet and if I had like been able to watch a, a video that showed how the RGB works like the software then I probably wouldn't have bought this keyboard and I'm probably going to be returning it because even just for like the keycaps being messed up in terms of like quality on a keyboard that costs this much um, it's not worth it for me at least and there's a lot of hype on this keyboard um, there are I bought this because there were so many people that said just buy it you're not gonna regret it it's the best one and that's just what everybody says about this keyboard and um, I'm not gonna be keeping it so kind of a negative review I know <laughs> kind of disappointed with this one. So uh, thanks for listening. Uh, see you later, guys.